All right, so technically speaking, game news and everything really isn't uh, something that's part of my channel. That said, I do play games from time to time, especially stuff like fighting games on my Twitch channel. And time and time again, the one genre of uh, gaming that I absolutely love playing, especially with friends, is fighting games. And it really shouldn't surprise anybody, but uh, recently I did hear about the new Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game, which is coming out. And I looked at the trailer, and ultimately, I I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited for this, because Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi was a part of my childhood, and it is something that still is, to this day, a part of my childhood, as well as my brother's childhood. So, if you were to ask me, you know, am I excited for this game? Absolutely! I'm absolutely excited for this game. However, there is some things I do think we need to talk about in terms of expectations, because I've been reading the different comments and I've heard different people talk about this game, and a lot of people are, understandably so, they're amped up and they're excited for this game. And I don't want to take that away from anybody, but I do think we need to address some elephants in the room about the, at the very least, the publishers who time after time continue to release a new Dragon Ball game and I think we need to address it because if we go in this I think expecting that the game is going to be exactly like you know the original like Budokai Tenkaichi 1 through 3 series but better I think a lot of people are going to end up very very disappointed that it didn't meet their expectations and, again, I don't want to say, like, I think that this game is going to absolutely bomb or fail or anything, because I do think that there is room for a legitimately good Budokai Tenkaichi game in this day and age. But I do think we need to talk about some things around the game itself before we, as fans, as gamers, immediately sign off on anything. And I think the biggest elephant in the room for that is DLC. Now, DLC in video games is a dime a dozen, because a lot of video games nowadays do this. Even stuff like soundtracks are available just as a DLC to own. But with Bandai Namco in particular, a lot of their DLC practices are focused on characters. Not just characters, it's focused on seasonal passes. It's focused on deluxe editions, premium editions, diamond editions, gold editions. They release newer and newer versions over and over again of the same fucking game, but this time it has all of the characters that they released for that point in time as a full edition as opposed to you continuously spending money on newer characters. And you know, sometimes they will, you know, on the holidays or whatever, they'll go on sale with these editions and people will buy them because, hey, they're cheaper and they come with the full character roster or so, they think. Like, and that's understandable because, hey, if it's cost effective and it has all the characters or just a vast majority of the characters at least in the game with it, then what exactly is the problem here? What exactly is the downside? But I think we really need to talk about this because a lot of people excited about this game. I, I am I, personally, as someone who enjoyed Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, it it does make me happy to see a lot of people who are also excited for this. But it also makes me worrisome because the one comment I've heard is whether or not um, Bandai Namco has released information on like newer characters or the new roster or anything. A lot of people have said that this is this roster for Budokai Tenkaichi 4 is going to be far bigger or go further than what Tenkaichi 3 had, which I think had over like 150 or 160 characters, I think. It's been a while. But to me, that's worrisome because, again, Bandai Namco loves doing seasonal passes and releasing characters on DLC and so on and so forth. But what that means essentially for the long run, is that if Bandai Namco releases Tenkaichi 4 like they have been doing with other games like Fighters, what that means is pretty much uh, for a lot of players, especially those who pre-order it, pay for it launch day, 
what that means is, more or less, a lot of people are just going to get a fraction of the entire roster. They're only going to get a fraction of it, and maybe a few characters here and there that they can actually unlock, or pay with in-game money that you can that you can get through, like, battles or story progression or whatever. And that's fine, but as time goes on, we'll pretty much see, I and honestly, I believe this, we'll pretty much see videos on updates on uh, from Bad Night where it's just like, hey, there's these new characters that are coming out. There are these new additions, there are these new characters, this, this character is from this movie, or this character is from this side game, so on and so forth. And it makes me worrisome because what that means is essentially, like, if I were to go out and pre-order it, and if I were to go out and buy it for like 60 bucks or how much ever they're fucking charging for it, what that means is I'm putting more money into Bandai Namco's pocket and draining my savings and everything, going way past my fucking budget, for all these different characters and everything. And these are going to be characters that, if, if it has been like it is, these are most likely going to be characters that are absolutely like either broken or absolutely fucking sick to have and can absolutely kind of be game-breaking. Especially if they're going uh, for online matchups, which I, you know, I, I can't see them not doing. And then come back to what I was talking about with, like, uh, the Ultimate Edition, the Premium Edition, the Diamond Collection, Gold Collection, whatever. A lot more people, when, years down the line, when they find out about these games, they're like, Alright, I want to try it. And they buy that game on sale. They'll have all those DLC characters that someone like me... Uh, like had to wait and buy for all those DLC characters everything with like the ultimate edition or whatever the fuck they want to call it all those characters for like less than maybe 40 or 60 bucks or maybe around 60 bucks just they th ultimately when it comes on si when these games like they have their expanded packs or whatever whatever the fuck Bandai Namco wants to call it, it just expansions available on sale or in the holidays or whatever more people are going to look at that and they're going to buy it. And, you know, you know, it's good for them and everything. But what it says to the people who actively put money into this game day one, what that says to them is that I spent like 70 or almost 100 bucks, over 100 bucks on this game. And they got it for like less than half of what I got, essentially. Like... It, it, it's a little aggravating because what that essentially says, what that essentially says is, Bandai Namco is telling you you could have just waited until the Ultimate Edition went on sale instead of just buying it on day one. Kind of makes you look like a fucking idiot. And personally, as someone who likes buying Dragon Ball games, I fucking hate that. Now, it's not to say that um, Bandai Namco should absolutely be against, like you know. DLC or anything like pay the DLC because it, DLC is absolutely it's it's a it's as you know a business practice it's perfectly fine to have it's just a matter of how you go about practicing it like that's that's the major hiccup like I think one of the best DLC practices I have had uh, in the game before is something like Sky Children of the Light. Now, if you don't know, Sky Children of the Light is a game that's available, I think, on uh, PlayStation, Switch, Mobile, and I think even PC. But it's a game that is available free to play, it's free to download, and you can play through the entirety of the game and have some legitimate fun. There is DLC, but it's never to the point where it's just like, oh, you've run out of blank, you've run out of stamina, you've run out of energy, so on and so forth. Would you like to recharge it for this much money so you can continue playing the game? It's not like that mobile game stuff. It's not like the mobile game uh, just wall where a lot of mobile games will do this, where they'll give you a battery or a certain stamina and they'll just like, once you've emptied that, you're pretty much done for the day and you have to come back when it refills. Like, it doesn't do that. What Sky Children of the Light's DLC practices is that you can play through the majority of the game. Uh, uh, majority of the game, pretty much, yeah. You can play through all the hidden areas, you can play through the entirety of the story, you can play through, like, all the hidden areas, as long as you progress through the game. If you, you know, explore a little bit, find more hidden gems and whatnot, or find unlock more secrets, and if you just progress through the game, you can get all of this, like, interesting stuff. You can unlock all these new areas that are really beautiful to see and everything. 
where the DLC practice is, mainly on cosmetics. Like, they have, like, these limited-time cosmetic uh, attires, masks, or whatever. They have these limited-time events and whatnot. And, you know, if you really are interested, you can just give them money and you can get, like, all these cool cosmetics. That's really where the financial practice towards DLC is. And ultimately, I think it is a really good thing because it's one of the prettiest games I've ever had the pleasure of playing. And it's also cross-play, and it's also free. So, like, when it comes to DLC practices, I don't think, you know, DLC as a whole should be banned and game devs should just stop doing what they're doing. No, I, I do think that it's a interesting practice, and conceptually, and sometimes in practice, it actually works really well. It's just that when it comes to games like uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, or, uh, just to track back, Dragon Ball Fighters, their DLC practices, Bandai Namco's, and not just them, but a number of other uh, fighting game DLC practices, it comes off more like it's a barrier of entry as opposed to it being, you know, kind of uh, an enjoyable enjoyable content that you can just download. Like, if you had, like, alternate skin colors or whatever, or, like, alternate cosmetics, alternate skin colors for certain characters, which, you know, some some fighting games will absolutely do. They'll give you, like, new, uh... They'll give you, like, DLC alternate skin colors for certain characters. If you have, like, stuff like that, I get it. I understand that. That's perfectly fine. But... With them hiding... Not just, like, you know, maybe one or two characters here, but a bunch of characters behind a paywall. And on top of that, also for a good majority of systems, the games that people have to pay for being locked behind another paywall where they have to pay for a membership in order to even try and play online, yeah, after a while, the finances start to add up. And a lot of people can end up going broke. So... You know, like, when it con when it comes down to it, it's just like, for Budokai Tenkaichi 4, I do think it's going to be a good game. I just think that the DLC practices are going to hold it back from being better than it is. Like, because you, you, you cut back to, like, you know, the days of uh, the original Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and 3. And, you know, those were during the PS2, the PS3 era. And, well, PS3 era has had some DLC practices here and there. Um, when it came to PS2, pretty much a good majority of the game just came with you in the disc. Like, you just had to unlock it or just pay for it with, like, in-game currency or whatnot. Or, hell, sometimes you had to, like, do certain requirements in order to be able to unlock certain characters. Like... It was there, and, you know, it was just all in the game. But, you know, like, if we're, if, if we as, you know, fans and everything are going to consider Budokai Tenkaichi 4's major success and overall quality of the game towards what was happening previously, I think a lot of people, including myself, I think a lot of people are going to be incredibly, incredibly disappointed and pissed off. So, I do think that we need to temper our expectations. And in terms of, like, you know, character roster and everything, I, you know, I, I do kind of believe that, you know, there's going to be a lot of characters in the game. But keep in mind, also, if you really paid attention to Budokai Tenkaichi 3, for instance, even though, you know, there were some cool Easter eggs, there were some cool moments, there was some really great gameplay and everything, there were a number of characters back in the day, even though it had, like, a fuck ton of other characters, there were some other characters back in the day that really felt like, you know, reskins of previous other characters. And that's understandable, because when you have this bloated of a cast, eventually some characters are just gonna kind of feel the samey. So yeah, if there are, like, a vast majority of characters, there is... One downside that uh, I think could be brought up in terms of valid criticism where it's just like when people try and play it, they'll ultimately realize that certain characters just kind of feel exactly the same as other characters. So, 
there is that. And especially, like I said, if this is going to be a DLC basis, then there might be a case where certain characters that they have in DLC are going to play exactly the same as characters that you can just have or unlock in the game as it is. So then it makes... So then it adds to that whole thing of, like, just buying these DLC characters just over and over again kind of adds to that whole thing of it feeling fucking pointless instead of just, uh getting the actual like full expansion or whatever so yeah um ultimately yeah like i like i said i i i am excited for tenkai 4 i'm excited to see how it turns out and everything but it's just it makes me worried because i feel like this might be a case of where it's just like nostalgia and nostalgia glasses are gonna bite a lot of people in the ass and personally it's just like I I would like to judge this game based around its own merit personally and see how well it does nowadays because okay if this game turns out to be like you know a big success and like let's say everything that Bandai Namco has been doing with their games is not present uh in terms of like DLC practices is not present in Tenkai G4 that would be awesome but personally, I doubt it because, well, ultimately, I think that to them, their DLC practices, even though it has been, you know, aggravating to a lot of people, and understandably so, it has been working. And I don't think to them, like, just people who are pissed off about the DLC practices are really going to change them and want them to stop doing these DLC practices because... I mean, people to them, I think people can say whatever the fuck they want. People like me can say whatever the fuck uh, they want. But ultimately, at the end of the day, our money is still in their pockets. So, what the fuck does what we say matter, right? Ooh.